What's up guys, a brand new expansion has just been announced coming April 22nd at 6 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time called Dread Awakening. They just dropped this information, so I'm going to quickly get a video out to you guys. Uh, I already did a video earlier today, which you should check out, but you're getting two for one because they just randomly dropped this. I'm not even going to edit it really because uh, it is late here, but I got to get this out for you guys. So let's check out the cool new stuff from the new set. There's new keywords. They gave us all the legendary cards here. Uh, so let's check out the new keywords first. We got Eldritch Mystery, sounds very cool, and Dread Touch sounds very cool as well. So there's gonna be 132 new cards, and there's 13 new legendary cards. Some of the cards are listed here, but not all the cards have been shown yet. But uh, here's Dread Touched. Uh, Dread Touched is when you play this card, you may choose to sacrifice a creature you control to the Dread. If you do, activate this card's Dread Touched text. So for example, that which feeds us seems absolutely bonkers. I just read this card and went crazy. Uh, it's a 4-mana 2-2, two -two, wild by the way, with Blitz and Twin Strike and Dread Touched. So then gain the sacrificed creature's strength and health then shuffle a copy of this into your deck. So if you have like a 5-5 five, five on board, you can sacrifice it when you play that, which feeds us. It becomes a 7-7 seven, seven Blitz Twin Striker that then gets shuffled into your deck. And then you could draw the 7-7 seven, seven, and then, you know, drop it on another 5-5 five, five, and then suddenly you have like a 13-13 13, 13, uh, Blitzer. I don't think I did that math right. I didn't. Don't check. Dreadwing is a Roar Delve, a carving. Okay, I don't know what a carving is from your deck and draw it. Okay, what's a carving? Dread Touch, reduce that carving's mana cost by two. Very interesting. What the heck is carving? That wasn't listed anywhere. Okay, Meyer Walker. We've got Dread Touch, gain plus two strength and one regen. That's crazy. This is a one mana card. So that means if you drop another one mana, let's say, you know, it doesn't even matter what it is because your deck can be filled with, you know, a bunch of little... You know, even like a walking plant or whatever, right? Or a broccoli, marsh walker, right? Uh, you just drop that, pip this, it kills it. Then this becomes a 3-4 with one regen on turn one. Oof, that sounds nasty. Of course, you have to sacrifice one of your own creatures to do it, uh, which effectively means you're like starting with less cards in your hand, you know, to some extent, and uh, having to run a bunch of one drops. Anyway, I'm getting too deep in the weeds here. I'm just excited about all these new cards. Uh, let's check out the legendary cards. Also, there's going to be mythic variants and promo cards, which seems really cool. So the there's going to be seven of the legendaries are going to be in mythic variants, one of ones. So that's very cool. Very nice chase uh, cards for us to have. I like the, uh, the Cthulhu-like uh, tentacles coming out here. I guess we're going to have these Eldritch themes in this set, which seem really cool. Um... And then there's going to be some cards that are only earned, or maybe not only, but some that will be earned through playing competition in Sealed or Weekend Ranked. And then there will be some that are earned from the Gods Unchained store in packs. So similar to last time, but I'm guessing a little bit more uh, concise, I'm hoping. Now let's check out all the legendary cards here. So we've got Lysel. All right, so we got Lysel, Lucid Nightmaster, Roar, Gain Control of the Weakest Enemy Creature Until End of Turn, Dread Touched, Gain the Strongest Instead. Either way, this card is really good at first glance. It's guild, and the guild deck is already really top-notch. And then this basically, even if it just gains you control of the weakest enemy creature, you know, it's like a free Umber Arrow or whatever. You can ram it into something else. You can use it for lethal, and especially if you're dread-touched, you know, you go face with four of your creatures, and then you just sack one of them to gain control of yet another creature that then effectively has God Blitz. You go face with the strongest enemy creature, and boom, you win. This seems really good for guild decks. Here we have Therial, Lord of Luster, a new Therial card, 8 mana, 6, 9 again. Uh, Roar, summon Lustric Cultists. Until your board is full, each Lustric Cultist randomly gains either Blitz, Frontline, or Ward, all very strong. Um... Ilarak Lustric Harbinger. That's a mouthful. Five mana, one, one. At the start of the game, this becomes the chosen one. Roar. If this has 10 or more health, set your opponent's god's max health to 10. This sounds kind of like a meme, but 
I'm excited for it. I love meme cards and also, you know, it kind of counters the uh, hostage light. You can't get 99 health anymore if I set your max health to 10. Seems kind of cool. If your opponent's at 30, this effectively does 20 damage to your opponent. So, I mean, maybe it's a lot more than a meme. We'll have to see. It's also an Aether, which I saw there was at least another Aether or two. So I think we might be getting some Aether support. We've got a six mana, the Dread Replicator. At the end of your turn, if the top card of your deck is an Atlantean, summon a copy of it. Dread Touched, choose any Atlantean in your deck and put it on the top of your deck. Interesting. So you either get to put it, you either just get to put it on the top of your deck, which seems worse, uh, or just summon a copy of it. Uh, you'd, you'd rather, that's at the end of your turn. Oh, so every, sorry, so every end of your turn, you basically get to summon, oh my god, you get to summon a copy of an Atlantean. So in an Atlantean deck, almost every card in your deck is an Atlantean, so it's just going to keep summoning things. And then also, if you Dread Touch, then you get to choose whatever Atlantean you want in your deck and put it on the top of the deck. That seems really strong. Ulrika Nakvi Chosen, another Aether, here we go. After you cast a spell, gain protected and attack a random enemy character. This seems very interesting. Uh, casting spells, but you have to run this as a creature. It seems like it'd be kind of built for like the hostage light type decks, which I'm not a fan of, so I'm not sure how this will play out. Uh, but it also could be used for like... Oh, it's a, it's a war card. Okay. I don't know what to think about that. I guess a control war deck where you run this. Seems kind of good. I mean, protected and attacking something. Every single time you cast the spell, it protects and attacks. I mean, you, you put a couple of cheap spells in your deck. Okay. You can attack a couple things all protected each time. Seems pretty good. We got a Deception, Karst, Stealer of Souls, 6 mana, 5, 5, Nether. Okay, some Nether Deception support. Roar, obliterate a creature from your opponent's void. After a creature leaves your opponent's void, summon a soulless base copy of it and give it Blitz. Whoa, now that is some serious void hate. Not only do you get a 5, 5 for 6 mana that obliterates something from your opponent's void, uh, which by itself wouldn't be quite strong enough, but it's still okay. Uh, you then get a, a Blitz Soulless copy of it. That seems really strong. At six mana, though, of course, you know, it's a little bit slow. It's going to be awkward sometimes. Your opponent's not going to have a great card for you to summon. It still seems really good. It's Void Hate, plus you get a copy of your opponent's stuff. Seems fun. 3 mana, wild, 3-3, three, three. Zaheer, Endless Bloom. While this is in your void, after a friendly creature is destroyed, while this is in your void, interesting, after a friendly creature is destroyed, summon this and deal 3 damage to your god. Whoa. So this is like the first thing I think we've really seen. There is like that really bad 1-1 one, one cork legendary loki and whatever or not even i don't even know what it's called it's terrible but it comes back out of the void this is legit this is like actually keeps coming back out of your void and it does three damage to your god but at the cost of you're getting a free three three and it's wild that seems really good and kind of exciting for nature's wild support here you're always gonna like be basically guaranteed to uh have a wild on board you know Signy Fallen Sister, another Aether, 7 mana, War, 9, 7, sheesh. Uh, Roar, your opponent summons the random highest mana cost creature from their hand, then this attacks it. Dread Touched, gain protected first. Wow, that's really strong. That is really, really, really strong. How much health does Ariandion have? Ariandion has 12 health, so this actually does not counter Ariandion, which is interesting. I kind of thought maybe this was built to counter him, but I thought he had more than 9. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly what this counters specifically uh, in terms of like combo-y type decks like Ariandion. This would have been the perfect counter, uh, but it certainly does kill pretty much anything your opponent has in their hand, and it 
protects itself first. So that's pretty nuts. Seems like a really cool top end of an Aether War deck. That which feeds us we saw already. I love the art, by the way. It's insane. I love the concept of this. Wild nature seems really cool. Seabarus Mother Beholden. 647 Dragon. Okay, I like dragons. Uh, and it's like a mermaid dragon. Sure. Roar, summon a dragon from your void with mana cost four or less. Okay, looking at you. Uh, what's the three mana? Fi fire, whatever it's called. The thing that does three. Three damage uh, to the god and the opponent's creatures. Uh, Red Touch, summon any dragon from your void instead. Holy smokes. Death dragons just got really nasty. Because some of your dragons you want to kill. Like the three mana thing that I can't remember the name of. Fire. Blackfire Fledgling. There you go. Blackfire Fledgling. Sorry, you can, you can comment below if you were screaming that at your TV. Uh, afterlife, deal three damage to the weakest enemy creature and your opponent's god. So then you basically get to kill it. And then uh, Dread Touched, I assume you can even then just pick the same thing and summon it right back. Or summon anything else too if you have a really large one like the uh, Lockhart. Holy smokes, this is now a new way to get Lockhart back out of your void. That's absurd. This art is so creepy. Uh, Valogen Dread Trawler. Okay, I like the name. Form out of 4-4 four, four, Dragon. More Death Dragons. Roar Dread Touched. Afterlife end after this creature attacks. Whoa. Uh, shuffle two Dread into your opponent's deck. Okay. What the heck is a Dread? Uh, this is news to us. Apparently Dread Touched is more than just sacrificing a creature. Apparently you might get some type of Dread card as well to go along with it. So maybe there's more of a downside to Dread than we are aware of so far. Uh, Irina Mana Shard Patron. I love that there's another Mana Shard uh, card here. We have Deuteria. Now we have Irina. One mana, one, two. At the start of the game, put this in your mulligan. Very cool. Roar, if your deck contains no other neutral cards, replace your god power with your domain's ascended god power. That's really cool. So there are six quote-unquote what used to be known as god spells, like war, unbound, I think, or magic, unburdened, death, unbound, nature, also unbound. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Death unshrouded, I think, or, or deception unshrouded, I mean. Uh, what are the other gods? War, War Incarnate, there you go. Deception Unshrouded, Magic Unburdened, I do know that one. Uh, nature Overgrown. Anyway, the point is they all have a god power, like nature's is Cultivate, and Cultivate is like a rant, like, you know, give all friendly creatures plus two strength. And Deceptions is actually really good. Deception has... Uh, Larceny, which is two mana, add a copy of a random card from your opponent's god to your hand, and summon a 1-1 one, one rogue skulker. So for two mana, you get a 1-1 one, one body, and you add a copy of a random card from your opponent's hand to your hand. Like, that's pretty insane. So, like, you literally start the game with a ridiculously good god power. That's pretty interesting. One of the god powers, I think, gives like burn plus 14 or something. Like, there's a lot, there's, there's some crazy stuff that's going to be unlocked by this card, which is really cool. Uh, four mana, four, five, Otanda, the Enlightened. So, full health, uh, full stats, I mean, on a four mana card. So, it's, whatever this text is here is going to be pretty nuts on top of it, I think. The first time you play a mystery on your turn, uncover Eldritch Mysteries. Roar, Uncover Eldritch Mysteries. So we have no idea what Eldritch Mysteries are so far. And Uncover is an interesting turn of phrase here because to me I would think it's like Blessing where you delve a Blessing and you pick one out of three and it's a delve. But here they specifically use the word Uncover which makes me think it's not a delve. But if it's not a delve then what is it? I don't know. Uh, maybe it is a delve and they're just using another fancy word, but I don't think that there's a reason for that. 
and that'd be silly in my opinion. So I'm imagining that uncover means something different. We also have a mystic here, which I think I saw people speculating there'd be some more mystic support in this set uh, based on some of the stuff they'd been tweeting. So we'll have to see about that. But that's all the legendary cards. And uh, I'll keep posting more videos as more information unfolds here. We went through this whole page. We saw that there is some other cards listed here, uh, but I'm not going to go through all of them, except for maybe the Swamp, which seemed really nasty. Four mana, four, four, Mystic. Roar, if you're holding a rare or better Eldritch Mysteries, transform a random enemy creature into a 1-1 one, one rat. That seems nuts. I don't know what it means exactly, but it seems really nuts and awesome. Uh, love a Swamp Witch. I love the theming of this set so far. It all seems really cool. I love the art that I've seen so far. Let's see. In Dread Awakening, there are six rare cards, six epic cards, and six legendary cards that can only be obtained through crafting, one for each domain. We also changed the legendary crafting, incorporating a shine down mechanic where players receive a meteorite version of the epic input cards in addition to the crafted legendary card. We hope this new mechanic will encourage more players to make use of the legendary crafting without having to worry about depriving their deck of playable cards. Very cool. Uh, with these updates to crafting, collecting the full Dread Awakening set will become a more rewarding experience. Very cool. Journey is only just starting. Um, yeah, more info soon, baby. I'm excited. New cards, new meta, new shakeup, new uh, keywords that sound really cool. We don't know exactly what Eldritch Mystery is, but it sounds like it's going to be awesome. Red Touched is sounding extremely awesome. And all kinds of new stuff. Let's go. Until next time, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button.